happy Thursday. My name is Lindsay and my husband Paul and I are co-chairing the ninth annual Melanoma Research Foundation Gala on August 6th. This year's gala is going to be live virtual and since it is virtual we are really excited to have the ability to spread awareness all across the country and even all across the world. My melanoma journey started back in 2017 when I was diagnosed with a rare subtype called ocular melanoma. Like most people that have, um, have had cancer or heard that they have cancer, um, they felt blindsided with the news. I had no idea that you could get cancer in your eye. My treatment consisted of radiation, adjunctive clinical trials of chemo, countless MRIs, seriously can't even count the number of MRIs um, to check for metastasis as well as um, tumor growth and uh, four eye surgeries. One of my eye surgeries being enucleation, which is the removal of my eye. So I can truly say that this cancer has left me blindsided um, on one side. Um, although I am down one eye, um, I live with cancer and I am raising um, three young yet um, amazing energetic kids, but it's definitely changed our perspective of how we do life. Um, right now, we try to keep life simple. Um, we try to enjoy each and every day, celebrate each win, no matter how big or small it is. And since I have a prosthetic eye and three kids, we do everything in our power to laugh through this crazy world and this crazy path that we've been put down. Definitely not a path that we ever envisioned um, or a path that I planned on um, raising my children like, but we found a way to have some fun and have definitely some prosthetic eye tricks um, to keep us laughing through this really crazy journey. Last year, I was honored to um, receive the Courage Award at the eighth annual um, Melanoma Research Foundation Gala in Denver. And it was truly one of my most favorite nights in 2019. I was surrounded by the MRF, my amazing care team in Colorado, truly have the most amazing care team here. I'm in the great state of Colorado and my family and friends. The feeling to celebrate and feel some form of cancer accomplishment, um, if you will, in front of those that I love so dearly um, was truly like no other. And this year, I am really excited that on August 6th, um, I will be able to introduce and, um, and I'm really honored to introduce and share our 2020 Courage recipients at this year's gala. One of my fellow OMers, um, ocular melanoma survivor that I have with me today is Carrie Rubin. And although ocular melanoma is extremely rare, um, rarer than rare, um, there are actually many of us in the, the deaf community that have met, we've joined forces and support groups um, to really just keep each other sane as we go through this um, cancer journey together. Happy hours, dinners, texts, um, FaceTimes to connect and share kind of how our most recent MRI results um, were, uh, the plan to fight metastatic disease. Um, some of our closest friends in Denver right now are fighting metastatic disease um, in their liver and their brain. Um, and really just to celebrate with each other, um, you know, another year of life and keeping um, each other connected through this journey. So I am, again, really grateful and honored to celebrate Carrie at this year's uh, gala. So today we're gonna kind of do a sneak peek um, and get to know Carrie a little bit more before our um, 2020 virtual gala. And so Carrie, I just like to, um, for you to introduce yourself and then we'll kind of do a rapid fire to get to know you more, get to know um, this crazy rare subtype of ocular melanoma and then kind of dig a little bit more deep into your journey. So, hey Carrie, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I, I'm so glad that you and I get to do this together because being at the gala last year and watching you receive that award, it was, it was an honor for me to see you because I know about your battle and it's incredible and you shine. You're just such a special, beautiful person. And 
I'm grateful for you and all the others that supported me um, when I was diagnosed back in um, 2018. I remember one of the first things I did when I found out that I had ocular melanoma is got on Facebook and to find out if there was anybody else like me. And I remember finding a group and then I remember putting in Denver just to see if there was anybody else. And I remember finding Liz who works as we all know for MRF. And I sent her a message and said, I would just love to talk to somebody about this before I go any further. And she said, do you want to meet tomorrow for a drink? And that began such a special and incredible supportive friendship. Um, like you mentioned, the community and the people and the get togethers, it's like everybody is fighting for each other to, to just win and continue on in life. And I love that. And I appreciate that support. I feel so grateful to have that support. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Carrie. I was not planning on um, getting emotional during this, but I think, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a journey for all of us. And um, yeah, th thank you as well. So uh, a little bit more to get to know you. Um, when were you diagnosed with ocular melanoma? In June of 2018. We're definitely celebrating a couple of years now, which I feel has every month, every year with this disease is, um, is such a huge um, accomplishment and something that we definitely, you know, celebrate all the time. Um, so Colorado, um, favorite restaurant in Colorado? Oh, my favorite restaurant in Colorado is actually called the Main Shack. Um, I'm originally from Boston and they literally send their lobsters every day from Maine and if you want a good Maine lobster, I feel like I'm doing a little advertisement, go to Maine Chat because it's yummy. <laughs> Sounds, I'm gonna have to get, <laughs> get over there. I've never heard of that. So really excited to hear that as well. I definitely love some lobster myself. Yes. Uh, so ocular melanoma, I think we kind of both shared as we kicked it off, like what the heck is, what the heck is eye cancer? How, how do you explain this, this really, kind of gross disease, this nasty, horrible disease, um, you know, of ocular melanoma, um, melanoma in your eye. How do you explain that to um, others out there? Yeah, that's such a great question because I've noticed even people in the medical world, some of them have never heard of it. It's so rare, as we have mentioned, people just don't know what it is. And I remember hearing about it and saying, really, you can have cancer in your eye. I just never even imagined that there was such a thing. So I, and people always associate it with being in the sun, which I did at first growing up in South Florida. I was definitely a sun girl, loved the sun, but it really doesn't have anything to do with being in the sun. Um, so I just explain it as really another cancer, very rare cancer and the best thing that you can do is like every cancer is early diagnosed which means having a dilated eye exam and i've been saying that for a long time so that's what i say um, and encourage people to do thank you carrie um through through the moments of kind of the highs and lows a fight song what what song has kind of kept you kept you <laughs> through this diagnosis, what do you jam out to um, in your car or at home um, in regards to this disease? Well, this might tell my age, but I will survive by Gloria Gaynor. Like, I just love that song. I can, I'll survive. I know I will. I take it every day and I've, I'm a fighter, I'm strong, and I will survive, I think is such a great song. I also love the fight song by Rachel Platten. I think that's a really good song. I love the words in that song. So I think both of those, I would say, are my two fight songs. And then with, um, you had mentioned before your I, or your annual eye exams, have you, have you always had an annual eye exam or what type of eye care have you done in the past? Sure. Um, one thing growing up, uh, my mom, my wonderful mom, who I lost 23 years ago, 
but I remember every year having my eyes checked and going to the dentist. It was from as long as I can remember, she always said to me, your eyes and your teeth, you always have to take care of them. So I always went and had that eye exam done every single year. Excellent. And I, and I have to share, I never had an eye exam done um, before my um, diagnosis. I have always had really great vision. Um, 2020, I never needed glasses or contacts. I felt like my, I was really blessed. My eyes were, my eyes were the one thing that um, always I could always rely on. And so I really encourage, um, don't just get an eye dilated eye exam. Um, four glasses, um, do what Carrie's done her whole entire life, um, take care of your eyes and, and take care of your eye health and continue to get those dilated eye exams. Um, please follow in Carrie's lead um, in regards to that. Yes. So Carrie, um, COVID has definitely impacted us. We've all been at home a lot more. Um, what's your favorite kind of Netflix flick show? What's kind of keeping you through, um, you know, what have you been watching um, in regards to in, in regards to that and always being at home? Right, I know it is. It's a different world. Um, well, I recently moved into a new new home, so that's kept me busy getting my new home set up. But if I had to pick a a Netflix um, guilty pleasure, if you will, it's probably Tiger King. Like I watched that entire thing, the entire series, and. I don't know. I, sometimes I need some mindless shows to just keep me entertained. And that was it. Tiger King. <laughs> I think we can all laugh about <laughs> the craziness of, of that <laughs> show, show as well. Um, so that, yeah, that's kind of a, a little get to know you about Carrie. Um, Carrie, I'd like to now kind of move into um, digging a little bit more into, you know, ocular melanoma, um, your treatment plan, diagnosis, et cetera. So tell us, tell us more about your ocular melanoma journey from diagnosis to treatment, um, whatever you, you would like to share with us regarding that. Sure. Well, I, I'd also like to mention that I went through breast cancer. Um, I, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2012, which is how I lost my mom. So, um, you know, cancer, I hate it. What can I say? Like all of us. So what happened was right before breast cancer, I had LASIK surgery done and you do a very thorough exam for that. Went through my breast cancer, fast forward, went through all my treatment for that, went back to get my eyes checked with my LASIK doctor. It was about a year and a half later. And she saw a spot in my eye that she hadn't seen when she did my exam for the LASIK. So saw that spot, immediately sent me to a doctor and I was living in Chicago at the time. He did a million pictures and said to me, actually incorrect information, told me that it, my breast cancer had metastasized to my eye and I needed to start radiation immediately. With that, I decided to get a couple of other opinions, which I think sometimes is really important to do because you never know. With, in my case, went to Wills and went to Baskin in Miami, Dr. Harbor um, in Miami and Dr. Shields at Wills. And both of them said it was a freckle. So I was excited. I loved my freckle. It was okay. I have freckles all over, a freckle in my eye. I can handle that. They said, we have to watch that freckle. I said, okay. Went back a year later, it didn't grow my freckle. Celebrated, was excited. Another year later, didn't grow. Again, super excited. I then moved to Denver, went to get some reading glasses. And that doctor said, you have a spot in your eye. And of course, I, I'm, I'm a doctor now because of my cancer that I've been through. And I was like, it's a freckle. I've already had it checked. She said, it looks a little suspicious. I'd like you to go to Dr. Oliver at UC and get it checked out. And then she called and made me the appointment, which you never really like when that happens, but you know it's pretty urgent when that happens. So I went to the wonderful Dr. Oliver. He looked at my eye. He wasn't positive that it was ocular melanoma, but he thought it was. And he said, the only way to really be sure is to do that biopsy. 
and I was like a biopsy in my eye. I was petrified just the thought of that. But he made me feel better when he told me that I was put out for this procedure. Like it's a real, it's a surgery. Thank goodness. Came back, um, went to see him. We had the appointment and found out that it was the ocular melanoma. I was devastated. I remember thinking, how can I have a second cancer that, and they don't even have anything to do with each other. It was really, really tough for me to hear that. But I had an amazing teacher, my mom, who taught me, you got to fight, you got to be positive, and you just have to do what you have to do. And that's what I did. So I had the plaque radiation done, which for those of you that don't know what that is, is they actually, they call it a button and they sew it into your eye and it releases radiation. Now, most people, I believe it's about 90%, their tumors are in the back of their eye. Mine, of course, has to be in the front of my eye. So that meant that the button was actually sewn in the front of my eye. That They call it, again, a button. I call it a piece of broken glass because that's literally what it felt like in my eye. The most painful thing out of everything I've ever had done to have that in my eye. Um, I just counted down the seconds until that thing came out, the longest five days of my life. It was very painful, but I just kept saying it's doing its thing. And I remember when I had it taken out, I said to Dr. Oliver, oh, that thing worked. My tumor has to be gone. There is no way that somebody could be put through that much pain and for it not to work. So after that happened, you go back, you get your ultrasound. I told them they wouldn't be able to find anything. They found a little thing, but the most amazing thing is that the tumor was shrinking, continues to shrink. Um, and you know what, to me, Lindsay, it was worth that pain. It was horrible, but it did what it, what it was supposed to. So I'm grateful um, that I still have my eye. Um, my vision definitely is not the same and continues to get worse and worse, but I'm here and I'm alive and that's how I look at it. So that was my ocular melanoma journey. I'll add one other thing. I remember saying to Dr. Oliver, I literally had just been cancer free from breast cancer for exactly six years, almost to the day, one day later when I found out about ocular melanoma and I said, I've made it six years. On my five year anniversary, I climbed to a very high mountain with my best friend and I was like, woo, five years. That's the good cancer free at the five years. And then six years, I did it again. Six years cancer free. Here's the day after six years cancer free. And now I have ocular melanoma. I said to him, do I have to start back at the beginning and wait five more years to call myself cancer free? And he said to me, climbing to the top of that mountain to be done with breast cancer was a tough climb. You had the chemo, you had all different kinds of things. But now with ocular melanoma, You've made it through that rough train at the bottom. And I really think you're going to have a smooth ride up for the rest of the time to get to that five-year mark. So I live with that every day, waiting for my five years so I can climb that mountain again and do my five. Here I want to invite, and we're going to climb that mountain together. And let's include all of our other... Um, Denver Posse, OM Posse, as well as anyone else that wants to come and climb the beautiful mountains of Colorado. So I, I am in, I love, you've never shared that story with us or with me before. So thank you. I'm, sure. I'm climbing any mountain, any day. <laughs> <laughs> you, I feel like you've, you kind of already shared like some of the advice, like your positivity and, and how, how you've gotten through this journey, but what, what advice would you give to patients with a similar diagnosis um, who are going to be going through a similar treatment? You went through one of 
um, probably the most common treatments that there is for ocular melanoma. What would you share? What would you share with um, the new the new night diagnoses that are watching us and, and with us today? It might sound a little bit cliche, but it really is taking it day by day because sometimes I feel like when you get a diagnosis like that, you are completely overwhelmed with what's going to happen? What am I going to do? Am I going to live? Is it going to metastasize? I mean, we know that's a very common thing with ocular melanoma, but to be honest, I don't think about that stuff. I mean, I'm not going to say I never do, but for the most part, I am grateful every day. My dad always says this, my rock. You wake up, you stand up, you're breathing, you can do what you want to do. And that's what I do. I'm grateful. And that's what I would tell somebody else to, to do is appreciate. And you mentioned this at the beginning, Lindsay, laugh, have fun. Yes. Were there tears shed? There were a lot of tears shed, but I have just learned to be in the moment, you know, we talk about being positive, but it's also being in the moment. We don't know if we have tomorrow, whether it be something related to my, either my cancers or maybe hit by a car. I don't know what can happen. We never know in this crazy world what can go on. So I live each and every day to its fullest. I appreciate it. I appreciate my family, my friends, my loved ones. And really, I just try and keep a smile on my face. And that's what I would recommend. It's hard. And sometimes you're smiling through the tears, but one day at a time. And one other thing I'll add, sorry, I just thought of this. You have to be your own advocate. If I would have listened to that first doctor, I don't even know what would have happened because he gave me wrong information. And then I went to another one. So be your own advocate. A doctor once told me that, and it was great advice. If you don't feel comfortable about something, find out the answer. So be positive, be happy, enjoy life, enjoy your loved ones, enjoy that ice cream cone, do what you want to do. That's all. Thanks, Carrie. And I, I'm really glad you brought up the advocacy part. I, I agree with you. I think um, being your own advocate is, is huge. And if you can't be your own advocate, find someone who can be your advocate. I know there's many out there that struggle asking the hard questions or, or challenging maybe what they're told. Um, there's a whole ocular melanoma community out there that we can help with what questions to ask or to, you know, what, what other, you know, help to get, um, what other avenues to have out there. So for those of you that are watching, please please capitalize and use, um, use Carrie's words of wisdom, use this big community that you have to really help guide your path. Um, we're all, we're all ultimately in this together. Um, Carrie, you've, you've also talked about your, your family a lot. You've talked about your mom, your dad, other family members. I know you have some nieces that are a big, a huge part of your world. Um, how do you talk to them? How do you talk to the a younger generation about this um, diagnosis? And how do you, what, what advice do you have to share with others um, of how they can share this diagnosis with those that they love or with a younger generation? Yes, that's a great question. And yes, I adore my nieces, Sydney and Sienna. They're eight and 12. Um, they are really the sunshine of my life. And I have three nephews. Scott, Andrew, and Matthew, and all five of them. I don't have my own children, so I'm lucky that my brothers and sister-in-law share the kids with me. That's what we say. Um, but you know what? I'm really very honest with them. I tell them the truth. You know, Auntie has, has to go get a test in her eye. Oh, my test didn't come back so good, but you know what? I'm going to have a special treatment I'm not going to be able to see you guys for that week, but that's okay. And then when you see me, I'll have a patch on my eye and I just tell them exactly what's happening. So there's no surprises. And I also tell them the importance of getting your eyes checked. And if you ever see something funny in your eye or you feel like things aren't right, you have to tell somebody, you know, tell mommy, tell auntie so that you get it checked out. Um, but really, I just tell them the truth. I've always been a big believer in that and just telling them what's going on. 
you know, maybe not share how painful that plaque radiation treatment was, but they know now that I can, you know, I have my eye and I can see and they know the importance of taking care of them, of yourself. Thank you, Carrie. It definitely makes it a lot easier to put things into perspective and, and for kind of the younger generation to take these, you know, things like get your eyes checked and wear your sunscreen. There's a reason why, you know, mom and dad are yelling at you and, and demanding that you continue to put on your sunscreen. I think the honesty of, again, not scaring them, but sharing, um, there is a rhyme or reason of, of why we are recommending things, why we are, um, asking, you know, them to do things that maybe they don't want to do. But I, I, I agree with you. I think honesty is um, the best way to go. And definitely how I've been with my kids. Um, I think it's definitely setting them up just to be, you know, strong and, and an advocate for themselves in the future too. Yes. Carrie, I think you and I, we, we both like to smile. <laughs> it's, it's definitely something that um, keeps us going. You've been smiling this whole time. That's one of the reasons I love I love being around Kerry and I love being around our, our Denver community because there's always, um, granted, we've had our moments of tons of tears and tons of moments where we can't keep our, you know, pick ourselves up off the ground. But um, what, what keeps you smiling? What keeps you so positive um, day to day? You know what? I, I've said this before. I think it's so much easier to smile and be happy than to be sad. And again, I am not perfect like everybody. I, I'm not going to say I don't have my bad days, but I feel like my energy is better. I'm better off when I'm happy and I'm smiling and I'm positive. It just makes the people around you happy too, right? I think you can it kind of flows off. Um, I think just being so grateful for being alive and you know, going through two cancers and being able to say that I've survived, I've made it through. Um, you know, I keep up with my doctor visits and my follow-ups and all that stuff to make sure that I'm doing okay, which I think is so important. And then when I get my great news, which thank goodness I continue to get, I celebrate those milestones. I'm a big date person. So when that year happens in the two years and my Facebook memory came up the other day of, I've never been so excited to go to a hospital and get surgery because I was getting the plaque out of my eye. you know. And I celebrate those days and say, look at that. Two years ago today, I had that plaque taken out. Look at me two years later. So. I think the smiling and the happiness is real important. So the, the Courage Award. Um, so I am, as I kind of mentioned earlier, um, when we kicked it off, I am beyond honored um, to introduce Carrie as one of our Courage Award recipients, um, again, at the 2020 gala, um, the virtual gala on August 8th. Um, Carrie, I feel like you just radiate so much positivity, so much hope for the future. Um, I, I love, I, I truly love being around you. Um, what? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an obvious that you're such a role model when it comes to um, the life that you live. What does this Courage Award mean, mean to you? You know, it really means a lot. I, I've been told for years with the breast cancer, with the ocular melanoma, how much courage I have what an inspiration I am, um, you know, you're so positive, all of those things, but, but now I have an award. I actually have an award that says, we've also noticed your courage and that it means so much to me. It really, really, right here. I love looking at it. I love my award. I just, I'm really proud to, that I received it. It just, it, it just makes me feel really good. And being acknowledged for such a special award and to share it with other people like yourself that are beyond courageous. I mean, you know, what you've been through, your battle was bigger than mine. Everyone has their own battle, but courage is so important. It's right there along with that strength, right? You just have to have the courage and I have it and I'll continue to have it. And I thank MRF for 
giving me this award because it really does mean a lot to me. Thank you, Carrie. Um, thank you for sharing your story and definitely helping us raise awareness regarding melanoma and one of its rare subtypes of ocular melanoma. Um, courage is definitely one thing and thank you for everything that you are bringing to the ocular melanoma community. There are many that um, have received this awards before um, both you and I and they are definitely my inspirations and role models every single day as well. So big shout out to um, Carrie and I's role models out there fighting their best ocular melanoma fight. And also want to thank, um, on behalf of Carrie and I, thank all the courageous caregivers, um, our family members, our friends, our colleagues. Um, this is a pretty crappy route for you all to be on with us as well. But thank you for being courageous and, and keeping our day to day um, happy and enjoyable and, and allowing us to be courageous as we go through this battle as well. Um, so we're kind of going to wrap up um, our session today, but I'm hoping that you learned a lot more about ocular melanoma. I hope that you have a great resource and, and Carrie today and Carrie sharing her story. And I hope for other ocular melanoma um, new patients or patients out there to know that you have such an awesome and big community that we're all here um, together to get through this, this crazy disease, again, that we call ocular melanoma. Um, the gala. The gala, though, to conclude, um, is coming up on August 6th. As I mentioned before, it is going to be a virtual gala. Um, I would like to give a big shout out to those that have already um, purchased tickets, donated, and definitely to our sponsors. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you've already done to support this gala um, in advance. And to everyone else out there uh, watching um, Carrie and I live or after the fact, um, please mark your calendars again for August 6th. Um, you can go directly out to the Melanoma Research Foundation website. Um, you can purchase a ticket, make a donation. Um, a lot of those that we've talked to are um, planning on hosting small watch parties in their backyard, um, fill up the drinks. There's a, a couple really awesome Denver restaurants that are also um, sponsoring um, the gala where you can get some amazing food from as well. So all the information is on the Melanoma Research Foundation gala website. Um, the gala, as I mentioned, it's going to be live virtual. Um, so we're going to kind of have like a virtual cocktail hour. It's going to be followed by um, our normal kind of scheduled presentation where we're going to be honoring um, a t um, several amazing Colorado-based physicians um, that are making such a difference in the melanoma community and the melanoma world. Um, we'll also be um, introducing the courageous individuals, so Carrie, as well as a couple others, and then um, concluding with a live fund a grant auction and a chance to win a trip of the lifetime. So kind of to conclude, um, really, it is so vital that we continue to raise awareness for melanoma and all its rare subtypes. Um, we uh, continue to thank and to continue encourage um, the donations and the sponsorships. It's really, again, important to raise awareness, um, to raise the research dollars to bring us so much closer to a cure. Um, within COVID, our, our world has been changed and has been turned upside down. Um, we're definitely struggling in the research um, you know, area to bring the research sites back on. It's, it's really important and really thank you for supporting the Melanoma Research Foundation and getting our um, research sites back opened up and, and bringing us that much closer to a cure. So thank you so much for spending um, such a, a great afternoon with us. Um, Carrie and I are um, really blessed to have all of you in our lives and following us. And, and thank you again for your support um, to the gala. And we're really, really excited to um, honor Carrie even more at that night's event. So Carrie, I look forward to um, honoring you and sharing your story. And um, really thank you for being such a courageous individual um, forever and ever and ever. So thank you, thank you. We wish you all a wonderful Thursday and we look forward to seeing you at um, the ninth annual live virtual gala on August 6th. So take care. Bye everyone.